Hello, everybody, and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43, and tonight we are taking our very first look at the brand new legendary tier cruiser, Italian cruiser, Venezia. So, without a, without any further ado, let's check out our uh, commander. We are running Azure Lane Zara. We have Nikolai Kuznetsov and Francesco Membelli. We are running Beyond Range in Arduous Intrepida. Fortify, fixated, and fully packed. I don't have this thing leveled up yet. I probably ought to, but I didn't do it yet for this video. Um, let's get into the actual build. I am running Amy or er, main battery traverse speed. That is going to help us later on with getting our um, turrets not as bad. Uh, aiming system is not necessary because it's, it's accurate enough. You don't really need uh, need to be more accurate. This thing has 15 rounds going around downrange. You're going to be just fine. Um, we're running um, steering gears because this thing needs steering gears really bad. Propulsion mod is probably not going to be your best bet because I tend to be moving all the time in this thing anyway. Uh, if you're stationary in this thing, you're probably going to be dead not, not too shortly thereafter. Uh, we are running Concealment Mod, obviously, and we are running the Main Battery Mod 3, which comes with a 15% Traverse Speed nerf, but because we already took that uh, Traverse Speed in the first slot, uh, basically gives us a slight buff. Uh, but it does increase our Main Battery Reload Time, or decrease our Main Battery Reload Time, and then for every 30,000 damage, it decreases it there further, up to a 20% reduction in Reload. Uh, we are running SAP, and I highly recommend you do run SAP. Uh, the Italian HE sucks, and anybody who decides to run HE on this thing is going to show just how much of a potato they really are. Load SAP in this thing. Um, if you get broadsides, obviously, do not be afraid to use AP, especially against cruisers. The AP is fantastic, and you can absolutely dev strike cruisers, especially up close, because you're going to land more often than not. And uh, I've done it with Brisbane's and Minos so far. I mean, we, we've dev struck quite a few people who have uh, underestimated the AP of this ship. So do not underestimate the AP of this ship. Also, learn to use the SAP. Unlike the um, Battleship SAP, the Cruiser SAP is so much better. It, it makes the ship that much better. Uh, I will try to go over how to use it during the video so that you guys can use it more effectively. Okay. Uh, loadout. We have the three smokes. You're going to want those. Do not switch this to defensive AA because you need those exhaust smokes. Um, catapult fighter helps you while you're using your exhaust smoke so that you can spot your own targets potentially. Uh, and then repair party, obviously, because you don't have a choice. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Italian unity flag because if you squint just right, it kind of looks like a Spartan. And then, of course, we are running the siren camo because I thought this was the best looking camo for the ship. Uh, the historic, quote-unquote, historic camo isn't too bad, but I prefer this. Specs, survivability, 52,970 hit points, so not a lot of hit points. 28% torpedo damage re reduction is kind of funny, but don't take torpedoes in this thing. Main battery, you get 203 millimeter 55 caliber 1939, or 1934s. You get 15 of them, reaching out to 18.5 kilometers with this build, reloading at 18 seconds with a 180 degree turn time of 25.2, which is why we tried to take that uh, perk in the first slot to try to make sure that we get our 180 time down a little bit, because uh, it's not good. AP shell maximum damage is 4,800, so a little bit inadequate in my opinion, considering these are 203 millimeter guns. I would expect a little bit more AP shell damage, but we aren't built for full AP in this thing. And then of course, SAP with our, our build is 5,395 uh, damage. Secondaries, you get some, but they're 90 millimeter, 50 caliber, auto 1939s. You get 24 of them, so 12 on either side. They reach out to five kilometers, reload in four seconds with a 5% chance to set fires. Again, pretty solid for, for what they are, but uh, they're not going to pin anything. They're just going to set fires, so keep that in mind. Torpedo launchers, you get two triple launchers, one on either side of the ship. They reload in 71 seconds, which is pretty nice. Uh, but these are Italian sea mine torpedoes. Uh, they do basically no damage, 13,900. So if you're hitting anything with reduction, you're basically doing no damage. Might not even get a flood every time. Uh, but they've got good detectability, and of course, they are slow as crap. 13.5 kilometer range, 
but 56 knots. Uh, I use these a lot for area denial or just defensive torpedoes if, if somebody decides to try to rush me around a corner or something like that. You do have absolutely ridiculously good torp angles all the way across the side of this ship, so you can launch these torps pretty much at any given time. Uh, so if you're going up against one of these, keep that in mind. These sea mines will pop out of nowhere and, and at least make you regret life choices. For AA, it's actually not too bad. You got 37 millimeter, 54 caliber Beretta 1939s. You get 40 of them doing 191 damage per second, but only three and a half kilometers of range. Uh, 65 cal or 65 millimeter, 64 caliber model 1939s. You get 16 of those doing 98 damage per second, but again, 3.7 kilometers. And then the 90 millimeter, 50 caliber auto 1939 dual purpose secondaries. You get 24 of those doing 162 damage per second but only reaching out to four kilometers. So very close in AA, but uh, not too shabby once it gets going. Maneuverability, and that's another reason why I would say don't worry about defensive AA. Maneuverability, 36.6 knots. It's a little bit slower than I was hoping. I was hoping it'd be a little bit faster. Obviously you could probably build into speed on this thing and get it probably over 40 knots if that's what you're after. Turning circle is not terrible, but not great for a cruiser. 760 meters, this thing feels very much like a super cruiser. It does not feel like a heavy cruiser. It feels like a super cruiser without armor. I'll go over the armor in a minute. But a 10.9 second rudder shift, and that's with steering gears. So that's why I say you need rudder shift on this thing. Steering gears is a must on this ship. And I don't want to give up my concealment, because the concealment is one of the good things about this ship. Speaking of which, 10.6 kilometers by sea. 10.9 by air, or sorry, 6.7 by air, 2 is always guaranteed, and a 7 kilometer smoke firing penalty. Uh, I'm not sure if that's normal for 203 millimeter guns, but it's definitely decent. 7 kilometers for 203s is pretty, pretty solid, uh, especially given what you can do to a destroyer if given the opportunity. Now, you don't have the tools at your disposal to hunt down destroyers. You just don't. You don't have sonar, you don't have radar, you don't have anything. So you rely on your teammates a lot of times to help you find them. But if you put yourself in a good position to counter the destroyers, Lord help any destroyer that gets caught with the SAP of this ship. Uh, let's go over the stats. 67% win rate. I actually at one point had like a 70 plus win rate, but teams have been rough tonight. I ain't gonna lie. It has been a struggle to get a fun game for you guys because like it's just not, it's not that kind of ship. The games are over so fast um, that it really doesn't allow you to get going with this ship. This ship does not thrive at the front where you're getting shot by everything because it just doesn't have the armor. And like I said, we'll go over that in a minute. But uh, 27 battles, so I've got a pretty good feel for the ship already. Main gun accuracy, again, fantastic, 48%. Torpedo accuracy is 5%, which is actually, I think, pretty good for given how slow these things are. But you can see my average damage is 81 my average XP, 1,600. 27,000 damage upon my spotting tells you that I'm pretty much at the front spotting in this thing, playing it a lot more aggressively than most probably would. And potential damage is actually lower than I expected. I expected this to be a little bit higher for a cruiser because I'm, t I'm constantly out front trying to uh, get involved in the match. Armor. Now let's talk about the bads. Okay, this thing looks like it has armor. If you look at this thing, you go, oh my god, that thing's got some armor. No, it doesn't. Why? Because it's almost all flat armor. Okay, what have we talked about in the past? Flat armor is terrible. Uh, you do have an armor belt that goes all the way to the bow and stern of the ship, but you cannot rely on that armor to save you from anything battleship caliber. Because most of them are going to have the pin angles, and especially like Alaska, Stalingrad, Petro... Any of these like really, really high pen angle sort of cruisers are going to shred this thing if they get even the smallest angle. And the Citadel is open for business, folks. Yes, you can potentially bounce shells, but most of the time you're gonna get yeeted, okay? Pr trust, all right? Trust me, you will get yeeted. Do not play around with trying to angle because you will get yeeted. Obviously, cruisers you can angle somewhat, but again, Anything with, with improved pin angles is going to go straight through this flat armor and absolutely ruin your life. So be careful. Now, if we get rid of that, like I said, it's 25 millimeter upper bow for you guys. So 15 inches and above overmatches. But at the waterline, you've got 40 millimeters. So there you go. 40. I don't know why it's not showing. There it is. 40 millimeters. So 
you've got that all the way down the side of the ship. So 40 millimeters is not overmatchable by anything in the game, but it's so low in the water that people rarely hit that 40 mil anyway. Uh, and you don't need to hit that 40 mil. But like I said, it's all flat too. So like if they get any angle whatsoever, they're going through it. And Lord help you because this is what they have to look forward to. A gigantic citadel from the frontmost gun to the rearmost gun. And it is way out of the waterline just begging to be f***ed up. And like I said, very accessible through the bow and stern side plating as well. So if you get caught, I promise you, you are going to regret life choices. It is very, very easy to get caught in this ship. One of the biggest things that I've had trouble with so far is just the ridiculous angles at which people will citadel this ship. Okay, so keep that in mind. Guns aplenty. You get a high number of main guns, which you have 15 for those of you not keeping count. You got three at the front, two at the back. The three at the front are not all super firing. The, the number two turret does not super fire, unfortunately, as you can see. It cannot depress over the front turret. So that limits your amount of DPM over the bow, which means a lot of times you got to end up angling way more than you necessarily want to uh, to get that extra turret on, on target. But if you get the chance to unleash a full broadside from this thing, Lord help anything that's on the receiving end of it because it is nasty. Sure shot, shells with a good ballistic trajectory. Again, high velocity guns. You're going to be able to absolutely reach out and touch people and consistently. Uh, once you get the the like aiming down for the ship, you'll be able to put those SCP shells right into the superstructure of pretty much any ship that you're shooting at most of the time. And then if the superstructure gets saturated, start picking up at the bow and the stern of the ship because you can you can get through the side plating there as well. Uh, SAP shells, obviously this thing can be equipped with SAP and should be equipped with SAP. Venezia. The project for a ship with 8-inch, 203mm main battery guns and a high speed that embodies the achievements of Italian shipbuilding in the early 1940s. It represents the development of heavy cruisers and increasing the number of main battery guns to 15. She was designed in 1943. So, let's take a look at this absolutely gorgeous ship and uh, talk about some things. So, first of all, SAP. Aim for superstructures and upper... Not upper side plating. Most of the time, if you aim for upper side plating, you're probably going to hit belt and you're going to shatter. So you want to hit, like, front and rear side plating if you can. Or superstructure. Usually superstructure. Okay? But, uh, yeah, look at this thing. And with this camo, I think this thing looks even better. Like, the, the stock camo is okay. But I think this camo really suits this ship. So, I like it. And it's a fantastic ship. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Now, I will say that this... Is it's going to be a, a high skill ceiling ceiling ship. I don't think this ship's going to be well suited to most people. I think this is a more um, the better you are at the game, the more you understand about the game, the better you'll do in the ship. So high skill ceiling, not just absolutely cracked in any sense of the word because it is so easy to get rid of this thing. Like I said, it is very much feeling like a super cruiser uh, in its agility, but without the armor. So keep that in mind. And with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we are going to be on Tears of the Desert, and I'm going to try to showcase how I play the Venezia. Now, I'm not going to say sit here and say that this, this ship is an easy ship to play, because it's not. It's very, very much capable of being removed at any given moment if you screw up. Uh, and on top of that, a lot of the maps that I played tonight were close quarters, which are just not where this ship shines. This ship is at its best as a flanker. You know, we talk about this all the time. There are some ships that are just better at flanking. And so, that being said, we are going to showcase that, but we're also going to showcase helping our Claber. Now, our Claber is actually going to do a fantastic job of helping to find the destroyers. And what you'll realize pretty quickly is that both of the enemy destroyers come to this cap uh, for whatever reason. So, we are going to try to put ourselves in a position where we can help the Claber if he does find a destroyer. And uh, we're also going to put some torpedoes out here. Now, pay attention. I just launched these torpedoes at 1404. Okay? Keep that in mind. 1404 is when I launched these torpedoes. Just think about that. And this is what I'm talking about with area denial, right? I launched those torpedoes because I anticipate somebody at some point coming through there because that's what usually happens, right? 
when you when you recognize when you play the game enough you start to get to a point where you're like okay i understand what most people's tendencies are like i understand how each map tends to play out more often than not now here the gearing initially starts doing the right thing he's turning away our claver is not able to keep him spotted because he keeps trying to smoke up i can't get a good shot i'm getting frustrated i'm like please just keep him spotted i can help you and then uh, obviously he goes dark just as we get ready to fire and that throws our shot off so we're not going to get a lot out of this particular salvo we're going to get one shell that hits the target uh, we did use our smoke screen and so at this point we're kind of in trouble now it's at this moment as he dodges torpedoes that the destroyer does what the destroyer was what i was hoping the destroyer would do which is make a full turn and commit to it now we just hit a torpedo on the enemy grossaker first as we dev strike the gearing that's the sap for you we just hit him at it was like 12 12 something or 13 something on the, on the thing so almost a minute runtime on those torpedoes to hit that gross occurs coming through that i didn't even know existed right and that's when the shima decides he wants to pop out so we're like well don't mind if i do if the shima is gonna be here i'm gonna punch him in the face and punch him in the face i do i get five full penetrations and take half his hit points claver starts to move in and to try to mop him up now just as he goes dark i get ready to fire my guns again we get the shot out the claver is doing a good job of helping get rid of him and then of course we get one more shot in there to finish off the shima now gk is out here he's turned full broadside in front of our entire team and you'd expect him to be getting yeeted he has lost half his hit points but some of that was from our torpedo which again it's, it's tendencies guys like if you want to learn to use your torpedoes like these sea mines are not very good at when you're actively shooting at somebody right like if if i'm actively engaging somebody you're probably not going to hit that person with a torpedo or you'd have to hit somebody who's absolutely a moron but what these are very good at is ambushing people with torpedoes hitting those gaps that you know somebody's going to sail through before they do it now the sh the Kleber ends up getting himself killed which is completely ill-advised there's no reason for that i know you're going for the the home run on the gross of but look you didn't even get it you, you failed so now i gotta try to kill this gross occur first and pray that he doesn't shoot me meanwhile i'm trying to dodge the schroeder on my left and the colbert who has come over here so i'm gonna try to hit the superstructure of the gk again getting the aim down is the hard part with these shells but once you do it's really not too shat or not too difficult but unfortunately gk keeps changing where he's going i i think i hit gun gun turrets or something if you hit any sort of guns or belt armor you'll, you might as well forget about it the shells will simply not do anything but as the gk dies of course he gets one more shot out so we got to be ready for it and we take one one full pin for 3700 now colbert is running for his life which is preferable for me but not preferable at the same time now we get hit with an he shot that sets a fire we know we're going to be able to go dark soon so i'm not too worried about it now i put out these next set of torpedoes not because of the the colbert here it's because i'm anticipating what the schroeder might do as i come around the corner i know the schroeder's here which is why i'm already turning to angle away we hit the smoke screen i don't have to worry about him because of the smoke firing penalty we get a solid hit on him again didn't aim at the superstructure there so we don't get a lot of damage but we get a few full pins and we have the uh, sap ready he starts to go forward shocker i wonder if he could find those torpedoes that we put out there foreshadowing actually no he ends up missing them but uh he does turn full broadside in front of my entire team but now unfortunately i'm not able to spot him because our plane isn't spotting him but this is what i'm talking about with using the plane to help spot people for you while you're in your smoke screen uh because it gives you a huge advantage You've got a great smoke firing penalty, which is seven kilometers. So use that to your advantage. Use the, the plane to spot when you can. It doesn't always work, but a lot of times it will, especially if they fire their guns. You guys know. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll try to wrap around behind the Schroeder. The Schroeder is going to get around the island, unfortunately. Uh, our battleships are starting to move forward. And you'll see me jump in chat here in a moment and be like, Hey, battleships, would you like to move forward, please? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm doing pretty well up here, but it would be nice to have a little bit of backup as these guys are kind of hanging out back in the back somehow centurion managed to lose all his out i don't understand it either if you guys can figure out how that centurion lost all of his hit points i'll be impressed but i have no idea pretty sure that the uh hit point fairy came through and took him 
But uh, just as we're trying to get around behind the Schroeder, a wild Musashi appears on the horizon. And it takes me a moment to recognize this. But look at this. This Musashi is about to get a harsh lesson in the uh, use of SAP. I go ahead and fire my guns and notice what I do. Do I continue to drive straight at this Musashi? No. Why? Because that makes me easier for him to farm. We already discussed this thing does not have armor. It is a kiting sort of flanking cruiser. Now, after that first shot of absolute beauty, we're gonna go ahead and aim high again. He's turned full broadside. We know that the shots are coming, so we're gonna not stay broadside. We're gonna turn away, make ourselves as skinny as possible as we absolutely riddle this man with SAP. Nine more shells on target. You can see how nasty this SAP can be. I mean, we haven't really been that crazy in terms of damage, but we haven't really had anything to shoot at. We had a Schroeder and a couple of destroyers, but we've done everything that's asked of us in this one. Uh, and we land another seven, eight shells on target. Nine technically, but eight of them were damaging. And the Musashi has had enough. He's like, screw this, I'm out. <laughs> Can't really blame him. So, do we continue kiting? No. We turn back and try to get him spotted again. Because that's what we do. Right? Kiting only works if they're willing to chase us. If they stop chasing, we stop kiting. It's that simple. I know a lot of people struggle with that concept, but, you know, is what it is. Now, this game has no right to be as close as it ends up being. And by close, I mean it's not actually a close game at all. But it ends up it ends up lasting longer than it should, which gives me a chance to get a little bit more damage. Uh, but you can see this Musashi. I mean, we get him spotted again, so he, he's trying to get a shot out at us. I don't quite lead him enough here. I'm going to end up hitting the rear turret, I believe, on this shot. Uh, and you'll see I do get a couple of hits, but uh, unfortunately not enough. And we get pretty lucky there. We weren't able to quite get fully angled again. And he gets away uh, a good shot on us, uh, taking quite a bit of our hit points. But we're okay. We get one more shot out. We do beat his reload by quite a bit, so he should be fine. Those shells will make it, and oh my god, they're missing. But we get just enough shells on target into that superstructure to finish him off. Uh, my bad aim does not always work out, okay? Sometimes, sometimes I just get lucky. That was one of those times. But uh, we got 93,000, we've killed three ships, including a battleship, showcasing just how nasty this SAP can be. And we've dev struck a destroyer, we've helped win our side, and now we're going to try to catch up to the other side of the map and try to help them out. Now I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you guys that I did the right thing here at the end of this match, because I probably didn't. Um, I played it very, very safe at the end of this match and uh, cost myself quite a bit of damage, I think. I think I probably could have had more damage in this match had I played a little bit more aggressively. Uh, but what ends up happening, I'll show you in a moment. Um, now, my overall experience with the Venezia has been one of, I enjoy the ship, but I don't enjoy playing Legendary Tier because Legendary Tier is an absolute mess most of the time. Uh, the games are over so quick because people don't know what the heck they're doing. So either your team is stomping them or your, their team is stomping you. There's no real in-between at Legendary Tier. Very rarely do you get those super competitive games that go down to the wire. Which, by the way, keep an eye out on because I actually ended up getting a solo warrior in the Montana today. So uh, keep an eye out for that one later this week. I'm sure that'll be a great video for you guys. Uh, it's not the highest damage game, though it isn't, isn't terrible damage, but it was a fun little solo warrior with a good teaching moment, and I made sure to point it out to those in my game exactly what I was doing uh, during the match. I was like, guys, this is how you win. <laughs> Don't be a dum-dum. It is that simple. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys that one later this week because it was a fun one. I also have another Montana video that I recorded that I was going to do for the, uh, ooh, the Montana got a buff, and... Is it good? The answer is yes. It's very good. <laughs> Give me more buffs on my Montana. I will never complain. But, uh, yeah, there's only three ships left. There's one in Ohio that's kind of like beaching himself back there. I, our destroyer is all the way out on the edge of the freaking map for whatever reason. Um, so he's not capable of spotting just yet. But he is about to come back and he's about to start causing problems. I actually launched these torpedoes to the wrong corner. You'll, the, the astute among you may have realized that uh, their last known position was on the next island over, and I launched them at the closest island. But uh, unfortunately, Colbert's out of my range, the uh, Minos behind an island, and uh, the Ohio is here. So now we get to showcase the, uh, the Ohio getting farmed by SAP and how he likes it. Well, yep, 
pretty solid. Not the best shot in the world. We got a couple of shatters in there, a couple of ricochets to go, but uh, he is barely moving at this point, so getting a lot more shells on target is going to be a lot easier. But again, I end up costing myself a lot of damage here because I take this as my be all end all right i get to shoot from behind an island i don't have to worry about being detected this guy's actually going to get himself yeeted here in a moment and he's actually going to survive it and for some reason nobody can yeet him further but uh my team is actually going to try to throw this believe it or not i know it sounds crazy but trust me they are trying to throw this match um our destroyer that's behind him should have the perfect opportunity to yeet these guys but somehow manages to not be able to land torpedoes to save his life the Colbert actually makes a good push around that left flank and starts DPM in the sh out of everybody. Um, and then, of course, I'm over here unable to finish off this Ohio, probably due to A, bad aim, and B, the fact that I can't seem to uh, get much damage when I do hit him because of saturation. You can see I'm getting solid hits, but not nearly as much as I would like. Um, he's backing up towards the island, which is taking making it much harder for me to pinpoint that superstructure every salvo. Uh, it is very difficult to to do damage with SAP if your ship that you're shooting at is almost impossible to hit. Like, it's it's so hard to see a superstructure, so it's hard to place the shot where I need to. And then the Ohio is just kind of sitting there and getting away with it. My note was thinking about coming out, and I was praying to God he did. Uh, but as we get very close to the end of this game, our team manages to put themselves in positions to get countered. you already seen the Centurion go down. The... Uh, other people on our team are trying to push into a position where they can get burnt down too. I believe the cruiser behind us ends up getting burnt down, which just leaves me, the destroyer, and this Montana. And you can see I'm trying to get into a position with that Montana keeps shooting the like belt armor of the Ohio. The Ohio is slightly angled, so if you're in the Montana in this situation, just aim, aim high, man. Stop shooting belt armor, it's clearly not working. And just aim high. Now, I start to push back towards this guy because I wanted to get a piece of him. But, uh, unfortunately, uh, the game does end here. Um, right at the very end of the match. Which is real unfortunate. Uh, I was hoping to get a little bit more damage in this one. But, this was the best damaging game that I've had. I've had a cup. I've had several games over 100,000. But, I've never had that one. But, this one showcased the strengths and the weaknesses of the ship. You have to see what SAP is capable of, where you should be trying to target if you're shooting SAP, because if you hit any armor whatsoever, the SAP is useless. So you want to hit superstructure. You want to hit, you know, hit those thin armor plating, okay? Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of this, and if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.